I've built a few Gauge 1 live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. Hello and welcome to part 7 of the Gauge 1 GWR Prairie Tank Scratch Build. Um, we're going to leave the steam chest for now. That's about as much as we want to do at the moment. Um, I'm going to take a close look now at the cylinder blocks. So I'll just show you a little bit more information. These are my calculations, rough calculations in terms of how these slots are going to be marked out on the surface of the cylinder block. You see we've got our 16th slot here, an eighth of an inch slot there and another 16th here. And that marks equates to what I've actually marked out now on the cylinder block. I will certainly have to be using my magnifying glasses on this one. There's the slot there. This is the eighth of an inch slot and this is the other one. So all set up on the milling machine now. But well, there's the two cylinder blocks, both with their ports milled in. So that's uh, so that's a nail biting job done. And you can see now this is where the steam chest fits on. And inside of there will be the slide valve. So let's steam in that end of the cylinder, exhaust, and let's steam in the other end of the cylinder, double acting. Carrying on with the steam ports. As you remember, we've milled those out, milled these slots out here. What I've also done now, as you can see, I've drilled, a, drilled and tapped a hole through into this steam port there so there's a connection there now so that's where the exhaust steam is going to leave the cylinder block and I've now got to drill a hole at an angle into that steam port so this is one of the very fiddly stages to uh, to complete on here so then I'm going to set up and start doing that right, now. Right I've got the drill set up and we've got this at an angle we looks more or less right. I've set up some cross hairs. I know the depth at where the port we milled out to. I've set a depth on that. I've also set the depth on the drill so we can't drill too deep if I'm wrong Problem is, if I'm too low, I might miss and go underneath and break through into there. So I set the depth so I can't drill any deeper. The worst thing that can happen is um, I'm certainly not going to be too shallow. It's certainly going to go. It's not going to break through the top. The worst thing that can happen is the drill hole ends up underneath where we've milled. I know I'll just do a drill another little hole in there just to break through. But that's the uh, that's the theory anyway. So we can start now, very gently. The biggest problem that can happen here is that the drill could wander. And it is very slowly. And I've just felt that break through. And that's good. There you can see the little hole that we've drilled that actually breaks through into that port there. And whether the camera is picking that up there, that little piece of wire is going through. So that seems to go okay. Now that all the fiddly machining and drilling is done on these cylinder blocks, the last remaining thing to do now is to just take a skim off here. Remember. Earlier on I left a little tiny bit of material on there just to skim off. That's really just to remove all this machine marks and scribing marks so we can get a nice smooth surface. So after milling backwards and forwards you can see that's the shape we're starting to get. And this is just milled going backwards and forwards. Here's the 
profile of the cylinder and the steam chest. And you see I've milled the steam chest now down to the same angle as the profile of this uh, cylinder block. Here's where I'm up to so far with the cylinder blocks. As you can see now I've got them to the right shape now and got all the sizes and everything correct and just finishing off putting the radius on here. The other thing I've done is as I mentioned before I made the steam chests and I've also put the angle on those as well so they they fit on there so that's all good and also I've marked out and drilled six mounting holes and on this one you can see I've already started here I've drilled and tapped two holes just to hold that in position and now I'm going to just drill and tap the other remaining holes to fix this steam chest onto the cylinder block. Just drilled the remaining holes on our cylinder block and it's now just a case of tapping these remaining holes with our 10BA tap. And so going through first with what they call the plug tap and this is where you've got to be real careful with these taps so they're quite fine and they can snap very easily so it's a case of taking it very slowly okay the tap and now just got to the bottom of the hole I'm going to just feel the resistance there so very carefully Take this one out and go along to the next hole and just repeat this process. Start it off very slowly going down with the plug tap. I'm just starting to do some work on the cap, the cylinder block cover that's going to go on this end. And you can see I've done this one. And it's really just a case of turning a, a simple blank like this one just turning a simple blank and you can see the holes uh, that have just been spotted through that just fits on there and go around with the drill I just put the spot marks on and what I'll do next is I'll then drill and tap these holes. After finishing the uh, steam chest covers um, I started looking at the steam chests themselves again. Um, what needs to happen now is we need a gland to go in here. As this gland takes a rod that slides backwards and forwards and on the rod will fit ultimately the slide valve. What I've just done at the moment is just cut out a rough block of phosphor bronze and this is going to be used to make the slide valves that will fit in here. Now this piece again this is quite an important piece again um, the way it's made is screw that made this little part first right made this little piece first then this little bush part here and that screws in and then once that's fitted in screwed in put that back in the lathe chuck and drill that hole ready for the slide rod that will ultimately be reamed 
but at the moment it's just been drilled and it's been drilled together so it, I know that this will be concentric when it's assembled. So one of the things I'll be doing next is drilling a little hole in there, partial hole, so this little bush, this little gland will be pushed onto there and then that will be silver soldered in. Mm -hmm. 